One of the great things about Fallout is the ability to play through the games in a variety of ways. Maybe one playthrough you use explosives and missile launchers, maybe in another you stick to melee weapons, maybe in another you only use your bare hands. Some people, perhaps most notably many a true nerd, have imposed certain challenges in their playthroughs of Fallout New Vegas. For example, not killing anyone. New Vegas, with its borderline overpowered speech skill, makes it somewhat easy to beat the game without killing anyone. But what about not attacking anyone at all? Let's clarify a few things before going any further. I cannot hurt any character, NPC, or enemy in the entire game. Hurting myself is okay. If I were to drop a grenade and someone got hurt, I'd have to reload an old save, which is a real pain in the ass on Xbox 360. Because weapon skills are irrelevant, the skill to focus on from the get-go is speech. You might think that we'd be dumping every special point available into charisma, but charisma isn't important, it's just speech. And we'll need intelligence to get the most skill points available when leveling up. Strength, perception, and agility aren't all that important. We'll also require high endurance to ensure that we stand a chance out in the wasteland. The remaining points go into luck. Fresh out of Doc Mitchell's house, and our first stop is Good Springs General Store to sell what we stole from Doc Mitchell and get as many healing items as possible. Now we begin the long march to New Vegas. The quickest way is also the most dangerous. The Cazadors were not unexpected, and with some panicked jumps against a rock, we get by without too much of an issue. And death claws. This is where the first obstacle comes. There's two of them, because of course there are. I got lucky and was able to hide inside a little hut atop Vault 19, until I sort of taunted one of the death claws and it got me. I pussied out and just waited in the vault for a while, then ran like a madman to get the hell out of there. And then, as I continued running, I passed by some powder gangers. The death claw was still behind me, so I put their lives on the line by luring the death claw into them. They handled it much better than I thought they would, but at least I got a sweet death claw egg out of it. I continued making my way to the strip. Some fiends started turning me into Swiss cheese. Good thing there were some NCR soldiers nearby that I could use as human shields. The fiends were killed alongside a few NCR soldiers. I looted their corpses and continued on my way. I sold what I could to the gunrunners and made my way inside Freeside and began looking for work. No matter what, I needed caps to get into the strip. The Atomic Wrangler and Silver Rush were my first stops, then the Kings. After failing the Birds of a Feather quest for some reason, I reloaded a save, sold what I picked up on my travels, and got inside the strip. The easiest way to do this is to quickly loot the body of the gambler who turns hostile when you're guarding the Silver Rush, and then looting the corpses of the destroyed caravan just outside of Freeside. Between the two locations, you can get a few weapons, two suits of combat armor, and a C4 explosive, which can be sold for quite a few caps. Once inside the strip, I had a chat with Mr. House, convinced Swank to give me a key to Benny's room, spoke to Yes Man, and finally confronted Benny. I couldn't kill him, but I needed the chip. After making him think that I took his side, he sent some goons to rough me up. I managed to lose them by sprinting towards the elevator while screaming like a schoolgirl. Next step, Cottonwood Cove and the fort. A few geckos and a boat ride later, I'm face to face with Caesar. I inform Benny that I plan to have him crucified, and I get the platinum chip from Caesar to destroy whatever lies within the bunker beneath our feet. The robots inside were not at all happy to see me. Nevertheless, I installed the upgrades for Mr. House and returned to the strip to get Mr. House out of the picture. I didn't kill him, I just ensured that the Earth germs would get him. For some reason, the Securitrons didn't attack me after I came back up from Mr. House's lair. Anyway, Yes Man was successfully installed, and I began the process of meeting the various factions that I couldn't possibly give any less of a fuck about. This is why you want to go with Yes Man. You don't have to do any quests, just introduce yourself to the Omertas, White Glove Society, Great Cons, Boomers, and Brotherhood of Steel, and you can be on your way. You do have to do a small quest for the Brotherhood, but if you've been dumping your skill points into speech like I did, it won't be an issue. I chose to ignore President Kimball's speech at Hoover Dam and let the winds of fate deal with him. The next problem was rerouting some power. The NCR told me not to enter the El Dorado gas station, but I did it anyway. 
The preparations are all prepared. Next stop, war. This was a little tougher than I anticipated, even though I was playing on easy. I would have played on normal, but honest to god I didn't think to check until I was 80% finished with the game. The Legion put up a hell of a fight. There were all sorts of Centurions and veteran Legionaries making things difficult. Then I forgot where I was going and had to do a bit of backtracking. Once inside Hoover Dam proper, I stood before two heavily armored NCR soldiers in power armor, pondering my next move. I figured the best option was to open the door, chug an atomic cocktail, and run like hell. With the Securitrons now arriving at the dam to support me, the push towards the Legate's camp was almost a cakewalk. Call it a cupcake walk. I then pumped myself full of whatever useful drugs I had and confronted the Legate himself. With speech at 100, words triumphed over the sword until General Lee Oliver was rude to me and I had my Securitrons blast him to kingdom come while I hid behind a wooden cart. And with that, Fallout New Vegas has been beaten without attacking anyone or anything. I'll be uploading the full playthrough somewhere, either on this channel or my second channel. Check the comments for a link to that if you're interested in seeing it. All things considered, it wasn't that hard of a playthrough. Certainly less fun than being allowed to murder indiscriminately, but still, not bad. If you were to pump up the difficulty to very hard and play on survival, it would require significantly more planning and forethought to complete the run. And that is going to do it for this video about whether or not you can beat Fallout New Vegas without attacking anyone or anything. If you enjoyed the video or learned anything, leave a like. Leave a dislike if you didn't enjoy the video or didn't learn anything. Follow me on Twitter at MittenSquad. My name is Paul of Mitten Squad. Have a wonderful day.